morning, friends. Welcome to another Field Trip Friday. My name's Steve. And I'm Tanika. Where are we going today, Tanika? So today we are inside the Glenstone neighborhood and we'll be visiting the Glenstone Preserve. That's awesome. I'm super excited to see this nature preserve right here in a Durham neighborhood. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Good morning, Ricky. Can you tell Hi. us a little bit about who you are and what you do and where we are? Sure. So I'm Ricky White. I'm the director of the Ellaby Creek Watershed Association, which is based here in Durham. And for those of you who don't know Ellaby Creek Watershed Association, first of all, we tend to call it EQUA. So you're probably going to hear that name a lot. Yeah. EQUA. That's just the acronym, ECWA. Mm -hmm. And we do really three things. Um, we do a lot of land protection in Durham, which means that we're um, buying land that's important for wildlife habitat and water quality to conserve it. The second thing we do is restoration, both of land, ecosystems, and water quality. So we do projects all across the city, but specifically in Elbury Creek watershed around things like removing invasive species, invasive plant species, which actually hurt the ecosystem, and doing projects to improve water quality like uh, creating what are called bioretention uh, uh, ponds and creating these other projects like cisterns and uh, rain gardens in people's yards to try to improve the water quality in, in the area. And then the third thing that we do is engagement. So we're really all about trying to make sure that we include everyone in the watershed and the work that we do. So we, we don't just work in one neighborhood, we try to work in all the neighborhoods and we try to listen to the community and understand, hey, what are your needs and where do they kind of match up with the environment? And then we kind of work together to try to implement things in a in a way that kind of works for everybody. Oh, that's, so that's kind of that one. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's super nice. cool. And yeah. I, it's been really cool um, speaking with you and working with you over the years because um, the Ellerby Creek runs right through the land that the museum is on. That's and right. So it's, it's near and dear to our hearts. And this watershed, of course, is near and dear to all of Durham. Um, and that is, it's just really cool to, to connect with you today. Yeah, and as a landowner, um, whether you be like, uh, a, an individual landowner in the city or a renter or a museum that owns a bunch of acres, controls a bunch of acres, you're all part of being stewards of the land because all that water that goes onto your property ends up running off into the creek and ends up either creating a healthy ecosystem and yeah. healthy aquatic ecosystem or something that's not so good if, you're, if, if, if the runoff is uh, polluted. So yeah. everyone's yeah. working together to try to make this a better place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the Glenstone Preserve? Sure. So Glenstone Preserve is actually out, if you can imagine, towards Falls Lake. So Ellaby Creek starts kind of in North Durham and downtown, and it flows through these urban areas into the suburbs, which is where we're at right now, and all the way out to Falls Lake. And that's where it, it um, uh, uh, dumps yeah, its yeah. water, <laughs> for lack of a better word, right? And um, uh, the bad news is that because it comes from the city, uh, it is pretty polluted. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's the most polluted creek that, that flows in Falls Lake. Okay. Why is that a problem? Well, Falls Lake is the drinking water for Raleigh, yeah. right? So um, we all want to be good stewards, not just of our own land and our own water, but also we want to be good neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so we all work together to try to figure out ways to improve the water quality so it's not so bad going into the, into the lake. That's going to be a long-term project, mm -hmm. um, but we're all kind of working together to try to make it happen. Glenstone is one uh, example of where we're trying to improve the water quality through land conservation. So we've, uh, uh, the Glenstone neighborhood, when it was developed, uh, part of the land was developed and part of it was donated to Equa. Um, and we are the stewards of that land now. It's about 80 acres. And we uh, have opened it up for public use. So there's miles of trails now. You can come out to it, you can see it, you can use it. But also it's helping to filter the water before it goes to the creek. So instead of having a bunch more houses here, you've got a healthy ecosystem that you know uh, filters water mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. hopefully uh, improves the water quality downstream. Yeah, and we spent a little time at the water treatment plant, so we know how important it is mm -hmm. um, when the water is coming in, all the work that they have to do. So just making it a little easier for the water treatment plant is really important. That's right. Yes. Absolutely. We've also connected with um, folks that own land in riparian areas, which is like next to creeks and waterways, mm -hmm. and how important it is to have that riparian buffer, that space next to the creek that insulates those creeks from either sediment loss or other pollutants entering the waterway. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's been cool connecting with so many different groups who are working 
towards this, this, this same goal of keeping our environment um, safe and healthy and protected for not only humans, but also for our, our non-human neighbors and our human neighbors, like you said, in Raleigh and other places. Like, just we work together as an ecosystem and, yeah. and uh, protecting the, these environments is just such a critical part of that. That's right. I'm so excited to learn more. Um, let's go check out some other parts of the, the, the preserve. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> So hi, how are hi. you? Good, Can you tell us who you are and what do you do here? Yeah, so I'm Steve Anderson. I work with the Ellerbe Creek Watershed Association um, and also at Duke University in the River Center. Um, yeah, Lindsay. Yes, I'm Lindsay Hu. Uh, I am an undergraduate and I'm working for the Bernhardt Lab for over the summer, just helping out. So I'm actually a civil engineering student, but I'm really interested in like how the environment is impacted by human activities. So that I'm just helping out for the summer. Wow. That's awesome. That's great. So, so yeah, what kind of what kind of research are you up to today? Yeah, so Lindsay and I are out today because we're a part of the, this Bass Connections project, which is a program at Duke that does you know gets undergraduates involved in all kinds of research work. But for us, it's with Ellery Creek Watershed Association and in in the watershed in Durham. So it's kind of a larger project that you could definitely check out online. Um, but it's focusing on Durham specifically and the river of our city being Ellery Creek. So we came out here today because we were down the road just a few minutes ago collecting. We have sensors in the water, so we measure water quality on a continuous basis for that project, but also kind of in collaboration with, with ECWA. Um, and then we're coming here because we have a site just, just past the woods here in the creek um, looking at how the different species of bugs that are emerging out of the water. Cool. Um, or maybe passing by and kind of looking at the diversity of bugs that are out here versus New Hope Creek, which is another watershed on the other side of Durham, which is a little more um, forested. It has kind of maintained more of a forest cover over time, whereas, you know, this is a little more of a... Out here it's also like that, but in town it's more urban. So kind of comparing the urban versus more forested. Um, sections of the watershed that's so. that's really cool. exciting yeah yeah it's also really cool to see the the, the preserve used at, in this research context right like mm -hmm. we we had just spoken with with ricky about all sorts of different reasons that this preserve exists you know from from you know offering you know kind of buffer for for water for protecting the environment against pollutants mm -hmm. all sorts of things and then of course there's also understanding natural ecosystems and and how you know even urban adjacent ecosystems or in this case like urban ecosystems function that's mm -hmm. really cool yeah and we're you know really in in Ellery Creek being a great location for looking at you know how um, biodiversity and pollutants in the creek vary based on different kind of sub watersheds in the watershed and how that relates to even human factors so is that equitable is green space availability equitable is it, you know, are there more pollutants in different portions of the watershed that, you know, maybe we can do a better job, you know, making sure that it's just across the board in our city. So that's that's a component I'm really excited about. Yeah. It's cool. um, and that's part of our Bass Connections work and Equa's work as well. And so. I think that's really important for students to even think about, like, how can you affect this water on a continuous basis and i don't feel like a lot of students connect to the water that they drink mm -hmm. which is why what we do right now is really important yeah and you know another component of what i'm working on with with equa is a creek watchers program which we want to get more students and more residents who are interested in kind of the water movement as a whole or even green space and the preserves getting people out to the creek maybe taking samples taking observations, more of a community science type project, mm. um, which which was kind of initially started based on what we've been hearing from community residents about flooding. So that's kind of a whole nother um, component of, of what preserves can do to help alleviate that, but also where is that happening and how can how can we help residents you know kind of connect with the city so yeah there's a lot happening yeah, yeah. Oh, that's uh, so cool that we great. just happen to run into on yeah. the trail and be able to talk about this and i love that idea of you talking about how science is is not just a tool for you know understanding the universe but it's also a community mm -hmm. of, of practitioners and of of kind of people that share what they're learning and, and it, it's really really important for for yeah. people to engage with that as as a larger community because you know, as, as professional scientists, you can only be so many places at any given time, but there's people all over the place and they can contribute to that to that yeah. effort mm -hmm. of understanding the world around them. I mean, yeah, definitely. One, one thing that I learned about, like, 
working in this lab is just like this so many things that can go wrong and like <laughs> you have to coordinate everyone at once and it's a lot but like you know it's always better to have like other people like work working together and like be able to help each other out because like it's so unpredictable out here yeah yeah many hands make light work yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so ricky it looks like um it looks like these trees were caught on fire <laughs> yeah they did intentionally yeah <laughs> believe it or not yeah so we're um starting a project where we do an ecological restoration of parts of the nature preserve uh, and that's important because um a lot of these ecosystems in the Piedmont, North Carolina, evolved with occasional fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and since uh, at least the past 150 years, uh, we've had a lot of what's called fire suppression on the landscape. Mm -hmm. In other words, people don't want fire, right? Yeah. right. But uh, that means that the ecosystem and the forest grew up into something different than what would have been here when, when there were fires. And we're trying to get it back to where it would have been, say, 200 to 400 years ago. Okay. Uh, so cool. Yeah, we um, just visited... Um, Neville Handel down at uh, the Mason Farm Biological Reserve mm -hmm. with the North Carolina Botanical Garden, and yeah, he, he was explaining the same thing that they're they're working on a similar kind of um, in, in a similar vein. They're they're in a similar direction. They're really trying to bring back that that native ecological importance right. of, of fire and how it, yeah, it's it's really important for a bunch of um, germination processes to happen. To to you know, like I, I think uh, we also learned a little bit about how longleaf pine and the sand hills is really affected by, by a fire regime and so it's really cool to, to see another group doing kind of following that that same wisdom essentially that yeah and, and the cool thing is even though Mason Farm is way on the other side of Durham and Chapel Hill um, the geology is uh, relatively similar mm -hmm. in other words um, at Mason Farm and here uh, we're in a, a matrix so in other words we're surrounded by these uh, soils that are highly acidic uh, so they're derived from geology that's really acidic. Uh, but then there's little pieces of the landscape that are on what's called diabase. Mm -hmm. And I think y'all might have learned about that we in did. Mason yeah. Farm. Uh, and that diabase, as it erodes, creates a different type of soil that is both a different kind of consistency and also it's more, it's less acidic. Mm -hmm. So it's, instead of being really low pH, which means it's highly acidic, it's kind of a little higher pH. And what that means is different types of plants can compete better in those types of soils. And so what we'll find in the preserve as we go through it is some tree species, some plant species that are a little more rare around here mm -hmm. than other species. And so this, as we restore it, as we add fire back into it, as we uh, reduce the canopy cover of the trees and get more herbaceous, you know, these types of, um, kind of grasses and sedges yeah. and things mm -hmm. in, we're going to hopefully see more diversity come in and possibly even things from what we call the seed bank because seeds uh, in some of these uh, areas that haven't been tilled recently, they can hang out in the soil for decades. Wow. And so it may be that we'll get some germination of things, some, some, some things popping up that uh, we don't even know about. I think and that's I think so that's amazing. really cool. And I think that's going to be really interesting to kind of watch how this land changes over time yeah. because now you start, you've just started the fire burning. So we can imagine how green this might all be in a couple years. It's right. going to be amazing. Yeah. Cool. Ricky, that was so cool seeing some of the Glenstone Nature Preserve. Um, just learning about this space and especially how it's like so connected to, you know, Durham as a community. I mean, I'm looking at like houses right mm -hmm. now and it's like right here. Um, that is just really cool. How can people get connected with the, the preserve and Ellaby Creek Watershed Association to learn more? Uh, the easiest way to start is really to just Google Ellaby Creek Watershed Association. We're at Ellaby Creek dot org cool. um, and you can find out information about events that we have going on about um, uh, maps of all of our preserves if you stop at any of our preserves at the kiosks we have paper maps that you can pick up both in english and in spanish and you can uh, learn about ways to volunteer through our website we do um, stewardship work days where we go out and we pull up invasive plant species um, we do a lot of community events so just check out what we're, what we're doing when you're ready. Absolutely, I got to join you all one night for a, um, we were we were looking at all these nocturnal insects. Mm -hmm. they, they, we, we got to see all these different moths and all these different um, other flying insects primarily, but other insects too that were just out and about like right after dusk. That was a super fun event that you, yeah. you, you were leading. One of my favorites, and we do a, a spring and a fall bio blitz every year, cool. and the moth uh, event is part of that. So that's another thing to kind of connect to when this, you know, this late summer, fall, we'll do another one of those. And in the spring, we work with Museum of Life and Science and other partners to do a bigger 
kind of Durham Wild Battle Blitz. That's yeah, neat. super cool. Well, thank you again, Ricky. Of course. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, today. it was nice to meet y'all. Thank you. Yeah. So, if you'll stay tuned, we'll see you right afterwards for our question and answer session. Thank you. We'll see you in a minute. Stay tuned.